Hi everyone, Tony from Hack the Movies here. And everyone knows the famous final girls like Ripley and Sarah Connor and Laurie Strode. But today we're going to talk about some underrated final girls that you either know or might not know. Whoop, whoop. Some old, some new. Today on Hack the Movies. It's time to hack the movies. Hello, Casey. Hi, Tony. It's so great doing another episode with you. Awesome. Even though the last episode I did with you ended up on WATP's Cringe of the Week. Did it really? While we were, it was a live episode, and I accidentally hit backspace and I lost all the super chats. Oh, I was watching. That was you hilarious. <laughs> that was hilarious. Yeah. yeah, that was definitely crazy. So I cut it out of the podcast version, but not the video version. <laughs> it was great. So they, guys. they had a good time making fun of me for that. Good job. Speaking of Carl, oh, man, not me. For, speaking of Carl from WATP, it turns out Jessica is now the review girl for his show Creep Off. Oh. Really? She hasn't been editing for me for five minutes and she's already jumped onto another show. Good for her. I forgot to mention Jessica in my channel update. Jessica has a new job. She's yeah. happy. She will still be on the show. I love anyway, her. Love her. Yeah. nice to see you. Crystal, hello. Yeah. Hello, Tony. And you are there. I okay, am here. final girls. Final we girls. all love them. Are you familiar with this concept I love of the final girls? <laughs> Do you know what a final, final girl, girl is? Yeah, like, should we go over what the definition is? <laughs> Actually, I would love to say what the difference between a scream queen and a final girl is because those are two different things. Yeah, yes. I think that's important to clarify. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> do you want to do that now? Let's do it now. Yeah, well, you get out of the way. Well, final girl just in like encompasses the last person to tell a story. Mm -hmm. That's it's true. The yes. final one to tell a story, like the truth. The yes. Absolute truth, the one that you can trust. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. Now, so, what's the difference between a scream queen? Scream queen is a bitch that screams a lot in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't necessarily survive at the they end. They can kind of be the same thing. They, Cause Sally, they can be, but yeah, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> Sally, yes, is definitely a scream queen. She's more of a scream queen, but she's she is the final girl. But, but that was before indeed. the concept really was solidified. But a lot of women right. um, that are in the industry don't like being called scream queens because it does have a negative, um, like, vibe around it mm -hmm. because it kind of seems like a little bit weak or um, derogatory-esque. Because like in the beginning of yeah. horror films that was where you saw the yeah. woman was always the one right. being the killed. One being, yeah, and even yeah. like in, what's it, like uh, Friday the 13th mm -hmm. with Kevin Bacon, like he doesn't, we don't even get to see him scared but we see all of the girls scared. Yeah, True. there's True. actually a quote from um, Sean S. Cunningham that says the final girl in these little morality tales is the person who embodies the moral code that society thinks allows you to go forward in life, which is very interesting. So it's what society. I mean, you can also see where the final girl from the 70s and 80s um, kind of embodies to what they are today. Yeah. And I know one of mine's completely different than what, like that, that the virgin or the, yeah, no, the, that, one the stereotypic I, good girl. I, I finally watched the one that you recommended. And I'm, I'm, I love I'm it. Okay, yeah. 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 Um, um, and then there's also a really good quote, though, that I absolutely love. Where'd it go? Bella Gosi had a fantastic quote about final girls. and More morphine, please. Shit, I can't find it. Was, you can cut uh, this. Last House on the Left before Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Maybe not. It may have been like a year. Oh, wait. Hold on. I can tell you in a second. Oh, my gosh. I can tell you in a second. Hold cool. On. Perfect. Oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't even know it was right there. 1972, nice. a year before. Wait, where's year before. Wow. Okay. Or no, two years before. Because Tex Chainsaw was 74. Yeah. But there's not really a final girl in that. She's not a final girl? No. She dies in the theatrical no. cut. No. Really? Have you seen the Sarah, the, oh my gosh, the remake? No, and I have two copies of oh it and I gosh. never got around to watching it. Oh my gosh, you gotta watch it. No, you know what's funny? The girl, she's supposed to be dead in that cut of the movie. Yeah. But if you can see, the actress is moving when she's supposed <laughs> to be dead because originally she was not dead. They decided yeah. in editing to just have her dead, but they couldn't reshoot her shame. like like twitching and stuff. Well, you should watch the remake. It's pretty brutal. Uh, I, I heard about it. I really like Last House on the Left, and I just... That was a time it's where, like, really that was around the time where, like, horror remakes were still, like, really kind of bad. But I not say it's bad. But. but there was stuff like what was coming out around that time. Like, I didn't uh, really. Hills of Eyes? 
No, I actually like that one. Yeah, I, I love that. Like that was a good but like Text Chainsaw remake. remake, I didn't like. No. Oh, gotcha. Uh, no. I enjoy it now. That There's stuff era. I like about it now. Jessica Biel specifically. Um, I'll go with that. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, Final Girls. Oh, the reason um, I wanted. Oh wait, I found my right? quote. I found my quote. Okay, what's your quote? But it's not really about Final Girls. I realized. <laughs> uh, but I really do love this quote. Yes. It's actually a really good you quote. Love Bella Lugosi. Uh, from Bella Lugosi. It is a woman who loves heart. Gloat over it, feed on it, are nourished by it. Shudder and cling and cry out and come back for more. Ooh. That's not a final girl. He's just talking about chicks who watch and heart. I don't care. That's I love hot. it. I remember there was a quote that I researched before because I did a panel at the... Um, it was a it was a horror convention. I will put That's a picture so cool. of it here in case I or unless I forget, but the picture's here. <laughs> and <laughs> you I sent got, me a link to the video. I did, I did. Oh, Mr. Lobo, yeah, there's a video because Lobo, uh, Mr. Lobo, I was working with him, mm -hmm. and he asked me to moderate this panel, and it actually had um, Eileen Dietz, it had Kathleen Kinmont, it had Nancy Lo uh, Loomis Keys, and um, and um, Caroline Williams. Oh, oh, we'll be talking about her soon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, speaking of Caroline Williams, yes. I guess that's a nice little. <laughs> that is on YouTube. That is on YouTube, right? That, what? That your panel? Is um, that available? I, I don't know. It's that. a. It's in the, in the episode of. Oh, okay. Of um. We will link to where you yeah, can watch it. You can watch. Yeah. Now. It's actually really cool, and then also I do a scream in it as well. Yeah. Kind of the reason I wanted to do this. Is because Hollywood likes to make girls like the heroes these days. And oh my god! Which I I know is that a I, bad thing. I know we're all agreeing is a bad thing, but anyway, uh, no, I'm kidding. But there's always neckbeards online. They're like, I miss old school action heroes like uh, Ripley yeah. and Sarah Connor and and Laurie Strode. Although she didn't become a badass one until like way later. Yeah. Um, which I think that that uh, video I did where I made Jamie Lee Curtis cry. I was real annoyed by the one girl in there who said like... A lot of times women in horror films and movies in general are portrayed as weak or small uh, or they need a man to save them, but that has never been you. And when I watched that video, I was like, that's literally how the first two movies end. A man mm -hmm. comes and saves her. But anyway, yeah. uh, these dudes always go to like the same like three or four choices. And like there's other final girls that deserve... Totally. Yeah. More recognition, I Th think. That are straight badass. I look, like I love all the ones. I love Sarah <laughs> Connor in two movies. Not that last one she was in. <laughs> that last one was really bad. Um, I like, I obviously love Ripley. Yeah. But like there are other ones out there. And that's there what are. I really want to highlight today. Like a ton of them. Yeah. I was, I, I, yeah, it was just like I was going through what I, I had 20 movies on um, that I was going to look at that I knew had some pretty awesome final girls. And right. I never sat there and watched a movie and focused on the final girl from the mm. beginning to the end. I thought that was so fascinating. Yeah. And then to compare them and be like, well, where were her instincts and stuff? Like one that's not on my list was um, It Follows. Yes. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, she's definitely a final girl, but she doesn't seem as strong compared to, to other final girls. Like another one that's not on my list is uh, The Descents. The set. That oh yeah, movie's so scary. Yeah. And she's fucking badass. She's she brutal. was. She was gonna be on my list, but like, you can see there's a different mm -hmm. verse thinking versus physical. There's different levels. Yeah. Of badassery. Hello. Have you ever wondered why your wireless bill is so high? I do actually. And let me tell you about today's partner, Mint Mobile. Don't they have those funny ads with Ryan Reynolds? He's one of the owners. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for as low as 15 a month, and you don't have to sacrifice any coverage, speed, or data. They're built on the nation's largest 5G network. They keep costs low because they sell direct to you online. They cut out the retail stores and salespeople. Why should I pay more than I have to for access to the same network? I'm going to click the link in the description or scan this QR code for the best value in wireless. All Mint Mobile plans include unlimited nationwide talk and text, plus lightning fast 5G and free mobile hotspot. Service in this video store is usually a little dodgy, but this hotspot is working like a charm. Thanks, Mint Mobile. Switching to Mint is super easy. Thanks to their digital eSIM cards, you can sign up and activate immediately right on your phone from the comfort of your home. And if your phone isn't eSIM compatible, they will ship you a new SIM card free of charge. 
The whole process only took like 15 minutes. Usually when I'm switching services, it feels like it just takes forever. But with Mint, it was a breeze. If you're interested in reliable coverage and fast data for a fraction of the cost, go to mintmobile.com slash hack the movies to get started. Also linked in the description, or you can scan the QR code. And if you've already made the switch, let me know in the comments. So let's get into it. I'm, I've am i got two older examples. Okay. And you guys okay. have some newer ones. Yes. But my first one, I'm blanking on her full real name because they don't really say it in the movie, but mm -hmm. they call her Stretch from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Yeah. Uh, we talked a lot about Texas Chainsaw Massacre in our worst Texas Chainsaw episode. Um, Stretch is awesome. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people see Dennis Hopper and he's like on the cover of most stuff and they think like he's like the main draw and he's great in that movie. We all love Dennis Hopper in that movie. <laughs> but Stretch really, something about that character has always grabbed me. She doesn't seem like your typical final girl. She's, first off, she's not like older, but she's like employed. She has a career. Uh, she has, she has goals that she's working towards. Like she's stuck as a DJ and she's doing like, you know, like kind of hokey stories, boots on the ground, like kind of like, like uh, interviews and whatnot, journalism for local stuff, but she has bigger aspirations. Uh, so yeah, I actually really, really liked seeing her. I got invested in her career and this opportunity that comes that she totally jumps on instead of like going to the cops or anything. Yeah. She's like, no, I'm going to use this to further my career. I want to be a journalist, a reporter. And like the one unique thing about her is that the this is the only time I can think of where the bad guys are fans of the final girl? Me and Bubba, my little brother, we listen to you every night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how that's why she survives. They're like really big fans. Like like you So what happens if you don't know the movie? Uh she has these guys call into her radio station and they get murdered by Leatherface and his family, and she has the tape of it. Uh, and she ends up playing the tape later on to see if more people can comment on it. And then Leatherface and Chop Top, Bill Mosley, hear it. And they're like, okay, we got to take this girl out. But no, I... What was that? Uh, oh. <laughs> I thought you guys... <laughs> no, but I really like her because, like, she's not, like, a super badass. No. She's not she's little... She becomes one, but she's not, like, ready for all this shit. She definitely is faking it till she makes it. Yeah. 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 No, but I love seeing her journey through the movie. Like, she realizes early on, she's really smart. She's like, okay, they said they're fans of me. And then with Leatherface trying to kill her, she uses that to her advantage. Mm -hmm. And she's able to manipulate him for, like, most of the movie. She becomes his romantic interest. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you can tell, like, it's mainly Leatherface that is truly in love with her. Yeah. And just, just and it's she adorable. Works, she works really well with Lefty, Dennis Hopper's Lefty. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad, I think we talked about it before, I'm glad they didn't do the, there was, like, a reveal that he was her dad or something. Ew, I don't like that. I don't know where you would like even. At all. It's apparently in no. the 2007 DVD release. They have footage of it. Huh. I don't even know how that would even fit That's in the too story. Much. That like, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. No. But yeah, I'm like every time I watch it, I now care more about her than Lefty wanting revenge for his nephew being chopped oh, up. Oh well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um B story. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah, she, like I said, she's she goes through a lot in the movie. She has to wear her friend's face at one I point. Know! And totally just like just go with it. She's like, well, no. this is such a imagine how much that smell, how like yeah. that and dance feel. with it. And he's yeah. still the guy's still alive. Yeah, and then she has <laughs> to like comfort him alive. while he's dying. I'm so sorry, I'm wearing your face. <laughs> um, a man does help her out at the end. Like she is almost dead until Dennis Hopper uh, comes in. But then yeah. after that, once she's one on one with Chop Top, she like fucking takes him out. She's she awesome. Uh, and she survived. She survived. Not only does she survive the movie, but in Texas Chainsaw Massacre three, somehow Leatherface survived. I don't know how you survive a chainsaw through your stomach coming out your back. Uh, just, uh, you somehow, know. by the way, somehow Grandpa survived. I don't know how. I don't know how the fuck that even happens. That doesn't even make sense. How and is then, Grandpa and then he gets, alive? And then, he gets his, then he gets his face blown off in part three, and then he's back in part how four. How old is he? <laughs> At that they point, say he's 137. Yeah, yeah. That whole movie is like a pipe dream to me. Yes, the second one. I love that movie, like because Toby Hooper just didn't care. He wanted right. to make a black. He says the first one is a dark comedy. You just can't tell. 
because the way it's shot and everything. And I feel like he wanted to make his final girl totally opposite yeah. from yeah. Sally because yeah. they yes. really are different from each other. Completely yes. different. But yeah, the one thing I like about Sex Chainsaw 3 is that they have... They find like the pit of all the dead bodies and the reporting on it. And then yeah. they're stretched lighting up a cigarette. <laughs> it's like, oh, she actually, she got her dream. She ended up becoming a reporter and went on to bigger, better things. I'm like, wow, we don't usually see, not often after do we see like the final girl just do really well afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> usually it's like they either just disappear Go or the killer it. kills them. Mm -hmm. But uh. here it's, here you have stretch just going like, yeah, I have a job. Okay. Oh, <laughs> that's what I was just going to bring up. What? Halloween too. Oh, zombies! Right. Halloween too. Yes. That's we fun. just see Scout Taylor Compton go through it. No, no, yes. I, and I we talked a lot about that in our worst Halloween two episode. <laughs> have you guys? Um, I'm guessing you guys have read the book Final Girls. I haven't read it. I am. I have been dying to read that. Wait, Is Final that Girls. Or the, final. <laughs> <laughs> you save your plug for the end. <laughs> Uh, I, no, final girl, the, final girl support group. There's a few. Final yeah. girl I have the audio group. book right. I haven't dipped oh, into really? it. Yet. I've been dying to just read that, and I yeah. heard it's really. I think they're making a the movie now. Oh, really? Let's yeah. Read it together. Okay. Yeah. And I feel like um, I think there's another book that's like a whole. Is it biography? <laughs> no, it's like a whole study on Final Girls. Like this really? woman wrote oh, yeah. the whole Is that, study. I think I I think I looked it up before. Um, Oh, uh, men, women, and chainsaws is a book yeah, uh, by okay. Carol J. Clover. I just did, I did so much research, and I saw yeah. that there really are tons of books mm -hmm. about this subject and about mm -hmm. how eighty slashers were, and about how there's actual studies to find that. Um, what was one of them? The uh, GDIQ, the uh, Gina Davis Inclusion Quotient. Um, it was to actually recognize the patterns in gender, screen time, and speaking time and oh. that the casual movie viewer might overlook. The results of this uh, study told a familiar story. In film, men are seen and heard twice as often women, as women. But yeah, there's good one movies, but keep going. There's <laughs> one exception, horror films. Women you actually see in here 53% of the time. And there's like so many different facts about women in horror it's absolutely fascinating. Yeah. And about how, like, it did women become scream queens or final girls because men had the fascination of seeing the woman kind of be brutally tortured through the whole thing? There's, like, different yeah. theories. Well, th that, that was one thing well. that was annoying me a few years ago when Hollywood's just like, we're making women, move, like, stars of action stuff now. And it's like, well, if you're a horror fan, we've, we've had that for a while. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you're finally doing it in Star Wars Hollywood, yeah, right. but we've kind of had that for a while now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm glad you finally got there, Hollywood. <laughs> And to go off your point about like the moral compass thing, yeah, um, I feel like with Stretch, she knew that she was hot. Yeah, and she used it to her advantage, but she didn't actually go through with anything. Yeah, <laughs> oh she could have done what more. She did. didn't fuck up. Yeah. 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 what? She could have. <laughs> and that's what I like about it. Like, you're right, because a lot of times, final girls, they're like sometimes they're like the goody goody virgin, but like Stretch looks like she's. She looks like she could party if she wants yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm glad, like, modern Career movies... Career focus, though. Yeah, modern movies are kind of getting away from it. Because that was more of, like, a Reagan-era thing of, like, the, the goody girl will survive because she's morally right. But, uh, Which I don't think is a bad thing. But we'll get well, I don't think it's a bad it. thing, yeah. but like when every movie's doing that, it's like, okay, it's nice to have some variety in our final girls. So that's yeah, why it I really be like stretch. That is the reason there is final girls. No. Where it, mm. Yeah, like you said, variety is... Great. And she gets herself into the situation, kind of. She's not just like, oh, Leatherface is next door to me. I got to run away from him. She's exactly. like, no, I got to. I, 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 she knows it's dangerous. That's right. Because she's aware of these killers. And she's like, no, I got to go for it. She I took it go head on. It. Absolutely. Oh, I remember when I was working for Adam Green. <laughs> oh. When I had to ship out like merchandise. Did he, and one did of he the... direct some movies I know <laughs> that might be mentioned later? And he, uh, we had to send out like merchandise and stuff. And I remember her address was there. <laughs> we were sending out stuff to Caroline Williams. <laughs> She's and uh, so yeah, sweet. I love Caroline Williams. She's great in a lot of things. She is. She's in one of the movies. Yes. The, yeah. And uh, I also love her. My second favorite role of hers is definitely the girl in uh, Leprechaun 3. Oh, She's man. so good in that movie. I love her in that movie. Oh, my God. She totally All the leprechauns. Blows up. Anyway, Casey, <gasps> you're next. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. So I picked Aaron from the movie You're Next. Have we Such seen it? Such a great pick. Yes. Wait, I agree. Such yes. a great I'm pick. glad you guys like that movie. It's you guys think it's a good, okay. 
I um, really do like this movie. Yeah. And I the first time I saw it was at a pre my very first pre preview screening ever in New York. And I thought, like, oh my gosh, Ty West is gonna be there. I can't <laughs> wait. I even like tweeted to him. Hope Ty West is going to be there. <laughs> he wasn't there. <laughs> and it was, nice. I really think this was my first introduction to a final girl. Like, because I was like, I was like 18 at the time when I was really delving into movies, really studying them, mm -hmm. like in film school and whatever. And like whenever anyone would mention a final girl, the first person I'd think of is Aaron. Yeah. So, and I think like my other pick is definitely more underrated because we know of Erin mm -hmm. more so. Um, but I really think she's the epitome of all final girls. I think so. Yes, yes. Now, I, I agree she's oh great. God. I really like her in the movie. I enjoy when the tables get turned and she does all that stuff. I just don't like the movie that much. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, Why? Do you feel that way about the movie? I think it was, you can kind of see what was happening in the movie. I enjoyed it. Mm. I don't think it's the best movie ever. I do like her performance as a final girl mm -hmm. the most out of the movie. If you had to pick like a reason I yeah. like the movie. And that's that's my issue with the movie. I okay. didn't like it back in the day, mm -hmm. but I always liked her. And I always liked that whole thing with her at the end. Uh, I rewatched it a few months ago because mm -hmm. you were very shocked. I didn't like it. I'm like, all right, well, you know what? Let me give it another chance. And I watched it. I just, the beginning is just very predictable to me. And I just, that, because it feels so generic and predictable, it just, the whole beginning of the movie is kind of bland for me personally, because mm -hmm. I watch a lot of these horror movies. I can see if someone doesn't really watch a lot of these could really enjoy this more, but I like knew from like minute one what the twist was kind of going to be. I'm like, sure. oh, yeah, there we go. I think because I saw it when it came out, um, I just really. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just didn't now, here's see the, the twist coming. Here's the thing. Because the movie I felt was real predictable, when she ended up being this amazing, like, elite killer, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, wait, I like that. The problem is, yes. I, for me, it just comes a little too late in the movie. That's the I don't point. Think so. I know. I, I know I, that's I... the point, and I get it. <laughs> But if it just happened a little bit earlier, I think I would like it. So I don't know. Maybe five years from now, I'll give it another chance and I'll finally oh my like gosh. it. I did How like it more. How will you forget about the movie? I did like it more this time around. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will give you that. Ago. But we'll the thing it. with this movie is, sure, it's it's very predictable. You can see what's happening, but they need to set up the characters because yeah. you need her to be basically the only likable character. Because when everyone basically dies, you're not really supposed to feel any type of empathy for them. Well, it's just like they no empathy just, for they the just, guy who shows up at the end. He had nothing to do with it. But you do feel bad for that one. But besides <laughs> the others, you re and the parents, to be honest, because like you do feel a little bad. Especially I mean, mom, they raised some shit back. Day. So I mean, they, they didn't did. do a good but job parenting. Like, I think and you like you kind of say you're like, go fuck these fuckers. Like, but yeah, you do only, want the other ones to die. You do. You're like you're kind of looking forward for her. You are cheering her on through the entire movie is the thing. Mm -hmm. Even when there's the little, you know, they try to throw some little um, switches in there and stuff like that, but you're still cheering her on. Mm -hmm. Like you really feel for her. But also I felt that it was, there's a little awkward part for me for when the daughter got her neck slit and all of a sudden she is reacting and she knows what, exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. And that took me out a little bit until they explained she grew Who up in she survival camp. Yeah. Like, this is her thing. And then I was like, oh, fuck yeah, I'm loving this. Mm -hmm. But it took me out and I was like, all right, are they forcing the final girl aspect on this? Are they forcing no, her? No, I, I like that she's like, I've been preparing for this my whole life it and I finally paid off, moment. I guess. Yeah, it wasn't I until thought that I'd be moment. In this situation. I just think with like, even every final girl in a movie, so they never have the hesitation mm. to fight back. Yeah. And they are super brave from the start. Mm. Um, and I really, what I like about Aaron is like, I know you say that it comes too late, yeah. but what we're setting up is a person totally different that you just don't expect. And I think that's mm. what the final girls have. The I, most I get that. And I, it, it yeah. works. It didn't work for me, but I could see how it works for other people. Because the boyfriend, people. like he even says, I didn't know you had this side of you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, she even says how she hasn't told anyone about her survival camp or at least hasn't mm. told yet yeah, the boyfriend or everyone. I do like when he's like, I didn't know you were really good at killing, killing people. people. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, what happened to so-and-so? I put a blender in his head. Oh. Okay. That was that part. <laughs> that was pretty good.
Jeez, that and was so bad. It seemed like in the beginning, especially when you learn about like her family aspect in the end, she was so excited to meet their family. Yeah. She wanted yeah. to help with everything. So we're really setting up her up to be like, oh my gosh, she's so innocent. She's not going to be able to handle this. And then you just like totally underestimate her from the start. Yeah, yeah. But no, she she's a good pick. She is a good pick. Really and it's good. thirty-five minutes in, Tony. Like that's not too far in. I don't know. But I feel like her like up. really kicking ass for does it really what was she supposed to start doing it ten minutes in before you even set up the other characters? I'm and, just like, saying, the whole I'm just saying the what, movie? once the killers break into the house, if she whipped out the blender a little earlier, I think I would have been more on board with it. I think I think it works. I think it gets crazier as it goes. I'm like, I would have liked does. this level of craziness. Earlier. But I again, think I think it's it balances a out. Choice. No. And this this At, whole time, oh, sorry. Sorry. No, no, no. This whole time, I thought one of the masks was a wolf, and she <laughs> kicks him in the balls, and I thought, oh my gosh, this is an ode to <laughs> the Monster Squad, and it's a tiger. Wow. Yeah, it's a tiger. But yeah, this Aaron is, is just <laughs> that's a lamb. Lamb. Aaron's just my ultimate favorite, and, and uh, she put others before her. She's just like awesome, and yeah. I think she she does survive. She's the poor guy. You recognize oh, the killer's mask? A years ago in wrestling, Bray Wyatt and Braun Strowman. Oh my gosh, remember, yes! Remember Braun Strowman yes. used to wear this exact same mask? Yes, <laughs> is that what that is? No, I think, the, I think Braun Strowman was wearing it because of how popular this movie was. I, I didn't put mask, that together. I think this mask existed before you were next. I think it's like a ghost face thing. They like did this, but yeah. um, but yeah, yeah, Braun Strowman. I was trying to remember, re I was like, I knew those masks were before so I got, familiar. Before, before I got back into wrestling, I was I catch it on TV because my dad was watching and I remember... Seeing Braun Strowman in the mask, I'm like, isn't that the mask from your next? I didn't know wrestlers I were wearing. I never that. put that together. That makes so much more yeah. sense now. Oh, I miss the <sighs> being was it um the the uh, Strowman brothers and like the three of them. Yeah, well, I actually rest in peace. I know Luke Harper or I know Brody Lee. Anyway, dude, was all that right. all you had to say about your next? <laughs> yeah. All right, I will say Adam Wingard. He's definitely made worse movies. Death Note. Death Note, his Netflix version of Death Note was pretty good. I bad. haven't but seen I, it yet. I've since grown to really like some of his other movies. Like, I really enjoy the VHS stuff, the segments he did for that. And I didn't expect him to do a good Godzilla versus King Kong movie. And he ended up doing a really great job. Like, oh, shit. And he made it under two hours. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> I don't right? think this needed to be that long. No. <laughs> Not many movies need to be more than two hours. <laughs> but I think a lot of girls... Final Girls yeah. and like girls in general watching this movie can learn a lot from Aaron. I'm surprised it didn't like yeah. get franchised. Does it? I don't know if I would like that. No, I, I mean, I obviously. Like oh, you mean like make her like a prequel or something? I, no, I just, I'm, no, I'm surprised they never did like a, a sequel or something or. I'm kind of happy they yeah. did it. Yeah. Not that you need it or not, like, but I mean, look how many horror movies have gotten sequels. Sure. Like they're bound to happen. Like, and this is it's now like a, a cult. standalone. And it RIP is. to that guy. Yeah, I feel bad. I I met him at a party. He was nice. Really? He was really nice. He was really that, nice. Yeah. I was surprised she wasn't like I checked out her IMDb. Like she still does stuff. She's yeah. like it's oh, a yeah. superhero thing, but I'm like I I'm surprised I don't see her. her. I'm surprised I don't see her in more things. She does yeah. con sometimes. Anyway. Anyway. Crystal, it's now your turn. Yay. Who was your first <laughs> final girl? My first final girl is Hold, what the fuck is her name? <laughs> Wait, what movie? So Crystal. Who is your first final girl whose name you definitely know? <laughs> it's Maddie from Hush. Mm -hmm. Without skipping a beat, she knew it was Maddie from Hush. <laughs> You're such a dick. <laughs> the power of editing. Anyway, uh, yes, I really enjoy Hush. Now, what do you... Tell us a little bit about Hush and why you liked her. Okay. So, I really like Hush because it was very different, I find. It's different. It was a suspenseful horror film. And it was to show someone that is so you would think would be kind of weak and she she's just a normal girl nothing she never survived a, a survival camp or anything <laughs> but for someone that you would think doesn't have one of her senses or actually really um two of them really because she's deaf and mute i believe mm -hmm. yes um to be able to survive an attacker who thought this would be the perfect person to kill to be mm. the easiest person to fuck with who survives and uses such badassery in this is insane yes it is insane what she does and how she she not only uses physical skill but she uses a lot of mental skill in this where she plays out different scenarios in her head of okay if i was to run i'm gonna die if i do this what is because she's a writer yeah and i like how it's set up 
where she like she's telling her friend in the beginning she's like signing she's like yeah my inner monologue it's my mom's voice mm -hmm. and then you're like oh that's kind of interesting and then you actually see a play where she's like talking to herself like as her mother would yeah, I thought that yeah. was really cool get the power back on I don't know if you flip the switch or cut the wires the one note I have, she really takes the time to think about things. <laughs> she does, which is fantastic because you see a lot of horror films where they don't, it's, they just go, they move and they go upstairs and instead of running out the fucking uh -huh. house. Like there's so many okay, things. Okay, Cindy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she just takes control the best she can. Mm. Like she uses, she's on the roof and she ends up grabbing the fucking um, bow, no. the bow and arrow. Yeah, yeah, the bow and arrow. Yeah. Crossbow? Is crossbow. It bow and crossbow? Yeah, it's a crossbow. Oh. Where she takes the crossbow, and then I like how they show the actual, like how hard it really is to use one. Yeah, shit's hard. Yeah, and she couldn't, do, like, and all of a sudden, and she is basically dying. She is bleeding out, mm -hmm. and she is still going, mm -hmm. and she is putting everything out there, and she fucking survives that shit. And I just love the ending. She's just sitting on the porch, like. What'd you call it? The performance is great. What was that? With her cat. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I love the cat. Yeah. The, cat. the performance is great. Played by Catherine Siegel. Mm -hmm. I almost said Katie Seagal. I'm like, no, Peg Bundy did not play the girl in Hush. <laughs> uh, Catherine Siegel. Uh, and her husband directed it, uh, Michael Flanagan, mm -hmm. who, if you're a longtime fan of this show, you know that I harassed him on Twitter and got him to reply to one of my joke tweets. Oh, my God. But I'm not going to tell that story again. I made it its own clip on the clip channel, and I will put a little card here. So and that's how to get celebrities to reply. You harass the fuck out of them. She is absolutely amazing in this, and she she's actually starting to become one of my favorite um, horror icons because she's actually becoming more and more relevant in horror. She oh did, yeah, well it it helps that she's married to like one of my favorite modern horror sure. director writers, and yes. they do stuff together. They also Which write mean, together. I want to see her do more did because you see her Midnight Mass. Yes. Yes, that was good. She I wrote it too. Did she yeah, no, no, no. It? The character in Hush. Yes. I, wait, Isn't that crazy? I didn't realize she, I, until I put this stuff together. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. Love that. You know what that reminds me of? Reminds me of Night of the Creeps foreshadowing Monster yeah. Squad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I'm like, you watch that, you're like, what's Monster Squad? You're like, what's what? Midnight Mass? Like, oh, it, that was set up in a yes. completely different movie. So good. That is what's so cool. <laughs> Did you think the, this may be inappropriate. Did you think the killer was hot? <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, that is never an appropriate question. Casey, do you know how many like but, real life serial killers and stuff have females that are obsessed with them? Oh god! Oh my you know, god! I'm gonna get into wait, that. Wait, you do That's know? That's true crime. No, no, not even true crime. You know how many like prisoners have like pen pals in prison? Yes. Like, yeah, they're weird. Oh my god! That's You're like, is it weird? I'm like, for a fictional yeah. one, they do it with real ones. So I don't. Yeah, that is very like Charles Manson had so like he was one of. Any of us isn't even Bundy. really a serial killer. He might have killed some people. He didn't kill anyone. He might have, they think he might have killed some people. Uh, I have a feeling he, he did. Apparently he was like big talk in prison too, but he never right. actually did anything. Oh, I read so many books and Oh, I would be big talker him. in prison. Like, yeah, I did all this stuff. Yeah, I'm cool. Yeah, he just, they're like, he Tony, I found out you cheated on your taxes. I'm like, yeah, but in like a cool way. <laughs> he was just like some- I didn't cheat on my taxes. That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> he was just like some short guy that had a whole bunch of followers and just told everyone what to do. It was like so dumb. We didn't have the internet back then, you know. We were just like, well, this crazy guy is pretty entertaining. I heard he met the Beach Boys once. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he wanted to be this famous thing, and yeah. then he just told people what to do, and then they just murdered on his behalf. I did like that the killer was just kind of like a Michael Myers. He's just kind of like, I'm just going to kill this lady for no reason. I'm going to wear right. a pale white for mask. This, yeah. yeah. This, right. that was, it was just one of those things. What is it? Like, um... Was the movie the uh, wasn't was the oh others? the strangers the strangers yes that's it. It was like you were just home um I those are petrifying I will say those again me. love yeah. hush love that character that was a, when you told me that I'm like oh fuck that's a really good choice now I feel left out I'm picking out I'm picking out broads from the 80s I'm like wow that was a really good modern relevant choice yeah, it <laughs> was, was really good first, yes so but it's okay. um it is funny I had it on before the shoot and I forgot that the redhead from Midnight Mass is in it. And I forgot she like she is the best villain in that movie in that She's show. So good in a show that has a demon vampire thing. She is way more evil than it. Yeah. <laughs> She's so good. So yeah. seeing her as like a nice person in this, like, oh, I'm not you. This is such a hard juxtaposition. And with a film as silent as Hush is, it's super intense. Yeah, it's so intense. Like you don't need any audio really Again, for it. Michael Flanagan's great. I didn't oh, watch yeah. his newest thing, The Midnight Club, Me not related to Midnight Mass. It's too deep. 
Huh? That's how we met Heather. 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 Langen camp. Oh, right, right, right. She was right. promoting that. Right, right. Yeah. You said, I'm not on a first Heather. name basis with Heather <laughs> Langenkamp. You're like, oh yeah, Heather. And I'm like, oh, Heather. I was like, I, I knew a Heather growing up. Uh, uh, one of my friend's wife's named Heather. Like, what? Yeah, that one, that one. But it just seemed too, in, that seemed too deep for me at the moment. So I don't I'm even know what that one, I don't, even, I don't know what Midnight Club is about. Midnight Kids. Mass, I know. Is it? Yeah. Kids. Hush is good. That's our final it's thoughts fantastic. on Hush. We love it. She's good. She's badass. She is. She yeah. is. Um, I'm glad you actually reminded me. That's like the one Mike Flanagan movie I don't revisit too much. You should. But I really want to. You should. He's so... The fact that he made an, a prequel to the Ouija board movie, and he made it good when he didn't have to, because the Ouija board movie was terrible. I'm like, why did he make such a good prequel to such a What's terrible a film? Ouija, Origin of Evil. Oh, yeah. I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember watching it, and I'm like, this is good. What the hell? Oh, my God. Anyway. I hope he comes out with a lot more stuff. Was Doug Jones in that? I don't know. I don't know. He was in his very first film, uh, Absentia. Anyway, my next pick. Now, the famous 80s slashers. Mm -hmm. Again, Laurie Strode. You have Nancy. Uh, I guess Friday 13th doesn't I'm really hit. No, she's to she's she is a final girl and she's no, 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 not no, no, underrated. She no, she is. Uh, no. But like Friday the 13th doesn't have like a consistent like girl. If anything, they have a guy who comes back a couple times. But even like Nightmare, Nightmare mm -hmm. on Elm Street, the other girl, the, the dream master, the one from oh. uh, four and five. The one I think it's overlooked. People know who she is. I really like Kirsty from Hellraiser. I really like Kirsty Cotton from Hell, and not just in Hellraiser One, Hellraiser Two. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's not a great movie, but I like Hellraiser Six. <laughs> I like her in Hellraiser Six, even though she's barely in that movie. Watch my bonus Patreon show, Bloodline, with my cousin Monica. That was the last one we covered at the time of this recording. So Kirsty is someone who, uh, what I like about her is, like, she could be, like, living with her parents, but she wants to be her own person. Mm -hmm. Like, she moves into, okay, the first movie's a little confusing, because it's definitely in England, but then a distributor was like, cut out all references of England. Say they're in New York. And, and it's everyone's, like, like, dubbed, aren't they? Yeah, everyone's, yeah. Kind of, some people are dubbed. Some, it's very bizarre. Yeah. It's not good. But anyway, um... She's trying to get her own place. Mm -hmm. uh, she's working in a shitty pet store. And then she's got to deal with her skinless, <laughs> weird, pedophile, murdering yeah. uncle who just came back yeah. from hell. And she's like, wow, this is a lot to deal with. And she's like, oh, and my stepmom that I hate really is bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some people just hate their stepmoms because they're mean and whatnot. Nah, but she's she like, oh, just... no, my stepmom is actually terrible. Yeah. And then... When things couldn't get worse, she's like, well, I need to relax. What's this box do? She's like, oh, great. Now I'm in hell. Now I'm in hell with these guys. And she always, and Monica, it cracks Monica up because she's like, Pinhead really should just kill her because she always is able to make a deal with Pinhead. She well, really she's completely charming. She's so good at negotiating. <laughs> she is. She is. The entire time. Like, they're never just like, no, we're just not going to do it this time. Every time. Yeah. So she she wins the deal the first time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's like, now nah, I got you what you wanted. And then they try to like screw her over and take her to hell. And she's like, guess what? I figured out your box. Yeah. And the second one, she does it again. And they're like, Nana, you're not going to trick us this time. She's like, oh, really? I know who you were when you were alive. And they're like, oh, what? Tell us more, Kirstie. <laughs> and then Pinhead yep. sacrifice. She gets, the, she gets the mascot of the horror series to sacrifice himself for her. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever seen that. Stand up. <laughs> and her performance is so good, too. Yeah. I remember rewatching, because so I rewatched Hellraiser when the new one came out, which yeah. I just was not. I loathed it. The new really? one? Yeah, for some oh, reason, I, it. I just loathed it. Uh, how many of the sequels have you seen? Yeah. I've seen Hellraiser. Okay. Okay. You got to watch all now, when, of them. When you get I will when I get a well, even, even though I love three and some of oh four. Oh my gosh. Uh, it doesn't excuse, this doesn't make that movie good or anything, but as someone who's a big Hellraiser fan, I, I like the new one. We have a whole episode on it. Uh -huh. I wasn't like crazy about it, but as someone who had to watch Hellraiser Revelations and Hellraiser <laughs> Judgment, I'm like, oh my God, this new Hellraiser yeah. is the best thing ever made. Yeah, <laughs> but the final girl in that one just was not. Did I, did I tell you who she, she was? She wasn't my favorite. Did I tell you who she was? Who is she? Did you watch my live episode where we covered the movie Sick? No. Okay, the girl in Sick, I was like, why does this girl look familiar? Turns out she's the real life sister of the girl in Hellraiser. But then I was still bothered. I'm like, why are both these girls familiar to me? I know mm -hmm. I don't know them from anything. Their voices sound familiar. Their mother is Pamela Adlon. 
from Californication and the voice of Bobby Hill from King of the Hill. And I'm like, I recognize their voice. Uh, <laughs> I went down a rabbit hole. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah, I did. think I've seen Hellraiser too. Like I've yeah. seen them spare. So spoiler was, yeah. for Hellraiser six, mm-hmm. her like husband tries to screw her over and like gets her the box to like mess with her. Uh-huh. So she's like, wow, my, my husband is like, my husband is cheating on me Kirstie's with multiple husband. people. Yeah. Kirstie's husband. Yeah. And then he gets her to open the box. I guess because he just wants to see if it works. I forget what the whole deal was. It's I think not he was that just good. curious. It's not the boyfriend, right? From the first one? No, no. That guy that guy disappears in the second one. Yeah. That's Which the part. Which is so that's, weird. You know what? That's another reason I like her. I feel like the studio or whatever, they kind of forced the boyfriend Probably. into that movie. And when the second one came out, they're like, that guy sucks. He did nothing that entire movie. He's just kind of there. Because of the second one, they're like, yeah, your boyfriend left. He had quite a story. It's like, you didn't hold him, too. You're like, yeah. They're like, you're crazy, lady. I mean, that boy, your boyfriend said the same thing. We let him go. Yeah. You're crazy, lady. Um, but just like all the um, final girls that we've talked about, I don't know too much about what Stretch's background, yeah. but I feel like all these girls are family oriented mm-hmm. and they're not afraid to fight back and tell no. it how like it is to no. these monsters. Now, her husband who uh, cheated on her and like did a bunch of shady stuff. Mm-hmm. In real life? No, no, no. In the movie. In he six. like gets her the box. Mm-hmm. She, en- okay, yeah, well, she ends up going to hell. She meets her old friend Pinhead yeah. again. Yes, she does. And she's like, hey, buddy. He's like, oh. You're not going to get us this time, <laughs> Kirsty. You've run out of stuff. She's like, I can get you five souls. Here's all the girls that my husband is cheating on me with. Oh, like, I got to see that. And I'm like, she That's did it. Again. Like and, then, and then Pinhead's like, okay. all right, yeah, cool, cool Kirsty. Sounds good. I'm like, three times? Yeah. She won negotiations three she times. She's amazing. She is charming. Also, yeah. her and her friend, they kind of like, that big diamond, I guess, is the devil for that area. And they kind of mess. She, I, she's the only final Leviathan? girl that literally yeah. went to the devil and was like, hey, quiet girl, mess with that puzzle. I'm pretty sure that'll stop the devil. I'm like, well, she's amazing. I really like Kirsty. Again, that's six movies. She's barely in it. She was like a kind of oh. she said she she said she took the park. She needed a new refrigerator or something. Really? Um but I, I do I like the her. story reveal that she was like the mastermind behind it. I'm like, Kirsty. And in the comics, I haven't read them. But apparently in the comics or the novels, she ends up becoming another pinhead. She I, ends up, so, yeah. so not only was she so good at stopping pinhead, she's like, you know what? I'm just going to be pinhead. I'm just going to be What him. is it? Like the third one? I think it was the book. Yeah, the novels. I, so the- I have them and I haven't started reading them yet. So I uh, have, I have like, I read the I'm first one. I read the first one multiple times. No, I have um, all three. Through, I'm starting now a collection now that I have like over 70 something Stephen King books and like 12 Anne Rice books. I'm starting and quite a few other other horror. I gotta novels. get I gotta get through the rest I'm, of her. I'm doing Chronicles. I'm doing all of um now Clive Barker stuff mm-hmm. and his comic the comics as well are so good too. Yeah, Thief of the, Thief of Always is a good book. I have that. I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think you I can't wait. When I was on the movie Crips uh, Yorkiethon podcast. <laughs> They would have me read stories for Princess Story Hour, and it was like always what? a Clive Barker <laughs> story, and they're so long, and the words are so big, and it's so <laughs> inappropriate. So it was, yeah, it was entertaining. Real, real quick, Casey, Casey, you did that <laughs> thing. Gone. You did that thing again where you just assume the audience knows what you're talking did. about. I am what so is the, confused. What is the podcast what? you're keeping? Yes, you I'm so about? confused. You know the movie Crypt, Adam Green and Joe Lynch's you, podcast. We're going to learn more about Adam Green soon, but yes. Yeah, so they have, every year they re- do a Yorkie-thon where they stay up so they don't get put to sleep, the Yorkies, because Arwen saved Adam's life pretty much. Yeah, I know. And so they raise Wait, a ton of money. why do Yorkies go to sleep? What? Why would they? No, go Crystal. Go to sleep? Because <laughs> yeah, they raise no. money for Save a Yorkie Rescue. So all of the Yorkies. How are, are they not all adopted? They're the cutest little know, But they're not. So they have to raise Adopt money. All the dogs. And all so dogs. And for them to raise money, they always have special guests on. They had me on a few times. <laughs> I'm one of the special guests. <laughs> and yeah, so I had to. It was Princess Story Hour. So okay. he would have me read Clive Barker, Joe Hill, and Joe Netter stories. And like, they're just, <laughs> you don't, I can't. I can't say some of that. I just feel like, can't. Did you censor yourself? No, for this I went all out. Uh, I really was dedicated to getting those Yorkies safe. I need to hear this. Of course, then I'd be one of those guys, one of those douchebags that wear their sunglasses at night. Every time I see those people, I think of that fucking song and it makes me want to start swinging. Just bash their fucking precious sunglasses right into their fucking faces. 
See how cool they look with their blood dripping from their eyes, shards of glass inflated into their smug, hipster faces. Fucking assholes. <laughs> then they'd have a reason to wear sunglasses at night. Those blind fucks. <laughs> Kirstie Cotton's That's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah, she's just, yeah, right. she's just a young go-getter that literally go gets go thrown through hell. <laughs> she has to deal with a lot. Her dad dying, her uncle wearing her dad's skin, the fucking monster crawling on the wall, a big diamond in the mm -hmm. sky, dude and with a penis growing out of the back. Of she deals with a lot. And then a cheating boyfriend. And then she's still standing, You know what's right? really annoying? She was more upset about the, I feel like she was more upset about the cheating boyfriend. That yeah. was like, I feel like I'd be more upset about the uncle thing. Understandable. <laughs> What's with you and you like in the final girls that like with, like they are around skin. <laughs> like that one that's to wear the oh, face. Yeah. Wait, this Kirstie, one in the skin. Kirstie literally has to wear the flesh yes. of the stepmother she hates at the yeah. end to yeah. trick the bad guy. I'm like, Why do I'm you like, like women? So you like women that wear other people's flesh? Is that? Are you like an Ed Gein kind of, <laughs> no, but no, on the other no, way? No. I don't know, Tony. She only did it that one time. Um, oh. But yeah, yeah, that is my last final girl. So mine were Stretch and Kirsty. Now to you. Ooh. Casey, what's your next choice? So my next choice, and I may be biased, <laughs> is Mary Beth from the Hatchet franchise. That's a good choice. That's like a good that. choice. Now, now. What? Two different actresses, but you two like different actresses. Do you yeah, like yeah, just the character it. or? Oh well, you know. <laughs> I was just gonna say really. I was gonna say something that's not. I have a real hard on for Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> I had no that idea. Is literally gonna come You're, out a of You're a bad yes. influence. You're a bad influence. We're gonna hang I do out so much more. See, I'm the final She's girl. You dirty. don't know all about me. <laughs> what guys like <laughs> well thanks for saying that so i don't have to but <laughs> yes daniel harris is great yes uh but the original um actress who was supposed to play mary beth she was supposed to play her in mm -hmm. all of them yeah but she was going through some life changes just a lot of okay. life stuff we'll keep it at that yeah and it was supposed to be danielle originally so it just really? all worked out in the end you know yeah, what that, cool. that happens sometimes because mm -hmm. what was it um they wanted Don Cheadle for Iron Man first, and they did Terrence Howard. And then, like, Ooh. as soon as they were able to get rid of Terrence Howard, they came back oh. with Don Cheadle. And honestly, well, it wasn't like that. No, no, no. But also, there was like a thing with like Twin Peaks. Um, the sheriff in Twin Peaks, the original one, they wanted Robert Forster, but mm -hmm. they weren't able to use him for the show. Oh. So when Twin Peaks came back a few years ago, mm -hmm. they were like, hey, Sheriff Truman, he's sick. Here's his brother. A different Sheriff Truman, played by the guy who we wanted to play Sheriff Truman That's originally. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that does happen where, like, the original person isn't in the first one and then yeah. they come back in a sequel. So the second one, though, you see the the ending in the yes. beginning. So is that is that Daniel Harris playing that part? At the, in the beginning in the of very Hatchet beginning. Yes. It yes. matched exactly. so well. I agree. I think it just, she carries the role on so well. Yeah. yeah. I feel like this franchise really gave Danielle like an opportunity to just come back again for a role that's actually, I don't know, really meant for her mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just has substance to it. Yeah, because she didn't do horror for a bit before exactly. before Rob Zombie's Halloween and then right. she was just playing. That was at, wasn't that after? I can't. No, I think Halloween was before Hatchet. I have all the hatchets on Blu-ray. Mm. Everything's in storage. All is my this... hatchet stuff. Oh yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, so I we don't have hatchet. hatchet. We have the that's hatchet why. shirts. Got the shirt. We have the hack why slash you tell hatchet me? comic. I have the hatchet DVD. Is it the uh. DVD at home? I didn't know. You didn't tell and me. And we have a copy of Frozen, Adam Green's other movie. I would have. Yeah, I was like, this is hatchet. Arwen. I literally have so many hatchets. Well, no, 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 because it's in the same universe. Because in Hatchet 2, the girl who survived Frozen is being interviewed on the news. She That's is. actually kind of cool. She is. Yeah. And yeah, she's the final girl too. Yeah. She is. No, I like uh, Mary Beth, right? Love Mary Beth. I yeah. really like her uh, in those movies. I like the first girl who plays her is really good. I like how she's there with a yeah. mission. She doesn't yeah. give a shit about what's his face. Exactly. Yeah. She's like, shut up, guy from Grandma's Boy. I got to go kill a monster. And once again, yeah. they're just all family oriented. Yeah. They don't take any BS. They yeah. are there for a purpose. Hatchet in general is really good. That's one I slept on for a while. Um, and you think I would see it because I love Daniel Harris and I got I to gotta finally point this out. <laughs> so everyone knows that I took a very awkward picture <laughs> with Daniel Harris when I was like 14 or whatever. So this year, at a, last year at Monster Mania, I met her again. I was like, hey, I got your autograph years ago, but I lost it. But I have the picture of us. So I'm like, can you sign the picture of us That's from great. Monster Mania 2? Uh, and I hope at 
uh, what is it? Monster Mania two, Monster Mania fifty two, uh, Monster Mania <laughs> hundred two. I'm gonna go back. Yeah, and you're I'm, definitely going to go gonna back. And I'm gonna bring the picture of us holding this picture and get that signed. <laughs> oh my god! You have to put that on the screen. Yeah, the I gotta put. Photo. Oh, that was great. She was. She looked at it. She's like, "You're a baby in this." I'm like, <laughs> so "Yes." Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm like, "You are aging so well," and I've only gotten. Oh my god, I've gotten so much worse. Casey, how do we become best friends with Daniel Harris? We're close. We're there. <laughs> We're She's in my there. book. I interviewed her for my book. Yeah. But no, then she was in, um, what you call it, See No Evil 2. Yep. Oh, I haven't seen that. I'm biased against those movies. She's she's really good in it, but. Her favorite is um... Steakland. Steakland. Steakland, yeah. I've heard That's her that. favorite. Yeah. Um, no, no, I really I like, I really <laughs> like I the Mary Beth character. I like the Hatchet trilogy. And like you said, where it starts off. They kind of made the movies in a way where, like, if you cut out, like, the credit sequence, you can play them all in a row, and they all do that. <laughs> Until the fourth one, and I, actually, the fourth one is the first one I saw. because what? they Because they played it on the last drive-in. And... They called it Victor Crowley. And yep. as someone who did it not watch that. It was also the first one I saw. Yeah. And as someone who did not watch the really? Hatchet movies. You guys. They maybe know. I knew that was well, the character. Well, did you recognize a familiar face and a name in the movie? Was, was there someone I should recognize? Who? Who? Arwen. <laughs> <laughs> who was holding Arwen? Me. You, were in, ha you were in the fourth know. movie? Yeah. yeah. It's a real, like, you could blink. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. But yeah, I was I mean, his assistant on that movie, and he even named a character after me. Oh, yeah, right. Tiffany Shepard is Casey. I mean, you're kind of like barely in, in the movie. No one can even really see. It's not that big of a deal, right, Crystal? <laughs> what? What the fuck? Are you pointing out my Dark Knight Rises shrine? That movie that I was definitely in. <laughs> this entire wall is just autographed, and every time you've ever mentioned how you're in that movie, where you don't see you at all. Yes, at least you see her. Yeah, you do see Casey. God you damn it. See her. <laughs> but this is autographed to yourself, Tony. Yeah. No, like, no, no, no. That's a fan of mine who was also in the same scene as me. So he autographed a DVD for me. That's actually how But it hilarious. says to Johnny. Oh, the box Tony. set. No, no, no. Okay, okay. The box <laughs> set was sent uh, to our mail uh, mailing address. Oh, by the way, for newer audience, for newer fans, we always forget to say we have a P.O. box you can send things to. Oh, yeah. So a fan sent that box set to us and said, Tony, I want you to sign this and put it where Johanna works. So she's constantly oh, reminded says, how Johanna. much more famous you are. <laughs> to Johanna. That's sweet. I am but no, no, no. I was joking. But yes, Casey is in, I guess it's the first time I saw you. Oh, <laughs> that's so sweet. And I remember yeah. telling Tiffany, because as you know, she goes through hell in that. Like yeah. More yeah. so than, and I remember Adam was like, no one else can complain. Tiffany's the only one that can complain. <laughs> on this set yeah. and I told her like, you're named Casey and it's so perfect for your character, brave and watchful, <laughs> courageous. <laughs> and she was so good. I remember I brought, um, uh, where I live, there was this mini pie shop, this little pie shop. And I offered her one and she didn't take it because she was ready for this role. I'm like, dang. That's good. That That's good. She's really dedicated. She's in it too. And Felissa. Yeah. Yes, in your book, Love yes. Um, Felissa's <laughs> death. Holy. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. I'm afraid you're breaking up. Uh, but no, I really oh. like those movies. But speaking of Mary Beth, she isn't, well, she doesn't show up until the post credit sequence. Of, oh, so you didn't understand? Yeah, at the time I, I mean, oh, I pieced man. it together. No. Yeah. And I was like, Daniel Harris. And I was like, oh, I'm yeah. guessing she's in the other ones. It did get me to go back and watch them. Yeah. Um, you also and, then, and then we became friends. I'm like, oh, I should definitely oh. watch those other movies. Yeah. I think Hatchet, though, is a type of movie that you need to know what you're going into. That it's not like it's it has a humor side to it. it I mean, yeah, that's, you that's what caught me off. I didn't know they were like horror comedy. Uh -huh. Yeah. So when I was watching Victor Crowley. I'm like, oh, I'm loving this. This is yeah. actually really funny. Yeah. Um, and Kane Hodder does a good job as Victor Crowley. Um, but yeah, oh my gosh. He, Victor Crowley scares me most. <laughs> I've had dreams about him because I don't get scared. Oh, but I have he dreams really about him scares too. Me. He's pretty creepy. Oh, he doesn't uh, scare me in my dreams. Victor Crowley? Yeah. 
But anyway, you I did do ask like, me earlier. I did like that. I did like that we did mention you're on the uh, in the movie because fans have recently started to realize yeah. I, there were a couple fans that were like, "Hey, I'm watching the fourth Hatchman. Is that Casey?" That's so funny. That's so uh, funny. But yeah, no, Mary Beth is awesome. She's resourceful. Yes. she knows exactly what to do. She's brave. Loves her family. Fearless, mm -hmm. and she will go like to the ends of the earth to get justice for her family. And I love that. Yes. Yes. Um, is she the one who finally? I my memory's a little. Fuzzy on Hatchet Three. I, that's the only one I haven't rewatched mm -hmm. recently. He didn't direct that one. He didn't direct that one, but mm -mm. I know they they use like a spell to get rid of him or whatever. That's the fourth one. It's no, the third Crowley. one. What do they do in the third one to finally the ashes? The ashes. That's right. That's right. But they bring him back to life with a spell, and Caroline Williams is in Hatchet Three. Yes. And there was a lot of like continuity errors because she really wanted to show off her arms. <laughs> that's awesome. Because she, she has like a tank top. That was like one of the biggest trials through that movie. Really? <laughs> yeah, she, you'll see that she's wearing like a uh, like a what is it, a shrug, not a shrug, it? a cardigan. Okay, yeah. and then she wanted to show her arms. Oh, <laughs> so there's uh, that's great, but it yeah. just it was a trial. But no, yeah, I like I like Mary Beth. Both actresses. It's a cool character. And I probably yes. shouldn't say this, but I I know I probably shouldn't say this, but when I was on the set, um, I had to like do some drives with the AD. And it just gave me like final girl vibes because I remember he was asking me questions about myself and like I said things and he's like, you know, you're not just another pretty face. Aww. So that's how I was Aw <laughs> I was like, excuse me? Oh. So well, yeah, look, I'm not. There's I've, other things to a final girl. I will never say. It. Crystal, have I ever said you had a pretty face? No. Never. Not once. And nor will I ever. Yeah, I know that. I took it as an insult, but I guess <laughs> maybe it's good. I don't know. Every every time yeah, I just hear a lot of insults. So every time I'm just like, oh. nice. every time yeah, I get it. Yeah, the way you say it. That's the way I said it. I say it like how he said it. <laughs> oh, you're not just another pretty face. Okay, yeah, yeah. Can <laughs> I imagine him like yeah. smoking like a cigar? <laughs> <laughs> Broad. Um, every time I get in a car with a girl, I just I I make a point to say I have no opinions on your face, and then I try. We need another dating episode. Dating <laughs> advice. Did you see Holy some people shit. want that? We should Update. totally do a dating podcast. Update, yeah. it's still not going well. We're all well. singles. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Uh, so, so, Mary Beth, awesome. We love her. We love Daniel Harris. Love I'm just going to put this here for the remainder. Okay, of that's that. perfect. That's perfect. Daniel and Harris yes, actually, speaking friend. of Final Girls and everything, I didn't know what Hack Slash was. Uh, someone gave me these comment, the comics years ago, but I was looking through them like, oh, is this a comic about like a badass final girl that takes on slashers? And yeah, apparently they did a crossover with Hatchet. That's so awesome. So now I have need That's to read awesome. all the hack slash comments that, I, that I've been sitting on and then finally read this one. Yeah. Uh, oh, but I yes. have all my comic books that Adam autographed. And I, everything's in storage. <laughs> I'm sorry. Aww. At least I have some of my shirts. You have some of your shirts. You, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, these are just kind of, sort of, some of your shirts. I'll have to tag the artist for some reason. And yes, yeah, if you... it's not like you really love yeah. Danielle Harris. She knows Who doesn't Danielle. love Danielle Harris? That's true. Uh, and it's yes, if you, uh, if you watch <laughs> Victor Crowley, which really should have been called Hatch 4, uh, so it wouldn't confuse Tony. Hatch 5. <laughs> if you watch Victor Crowley and you want to leave a review on Amazon or IMDb, make sure you be like, Casey was really good at the movie. I'm in the IMDb trivia. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you are. That yeah. is dope. Say, say, Casey is the best background actor since Tony <laughs> from Hack the Movie. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> now, Crystal, let's let's end this on a big one. Who do you yeah. pick for your last final girl? So I wanted to do something that came out very recent. And I didn't didn't come to mind until I started thinking about it, but Margot in the menu. Yes, so people have been telling me to watch this thing. It's really fucking good, and I haven't gotten around. People have said that, and surprisingly, I didn't. I don't think I watched a trailer. I think I only saw like a poster, and no one ever really spoiled what it was. I had like guesses. Mm -hmm. I was not ready for this movie, and I was like, "This movie is great." I'm kind of biased because I like that actress, but no, her character. She's I'm so like, good. "Oh wow, I this is awesome." So when you told me that's who you're picking, I finally watched the movie. I'm like, that's a good fucking pick. But yeah, tell us about her. So she's not a typical final girl. Mm -hmm. She, spoiler, she's a fucking escort. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That she was just picked up by this guy who needed a date. So he picked her to go to this exclusive dinner with all mm -hmm. these fucking fancy bougie people. And they are just the most ungrateful people that are there. And the chef 
goes fucking nuts and he's so tired of everything. He uh, he's, decides... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. He doesn't go nuts just right then. He's been nuts he's for a been while. He's been a little crazy. And he's also a cult leader who's made everyone else go nuts. But keep okay, going. there's that too. <laughs> but apparently his food's really good, okay? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and he just decides to invite all the fancy fuckers. Mm-hmm. And decides, fuck it, we're all going down together, including his cult members. <laughs> and he recognizes that she's not, you can tell, too, just the way her mannerisms and stuff, that mm. she's not like everyone else. She doesn't come from He that. constantly says, she's like, you're not you're, supposed to be here. Yeah, you're she, not mm-hmm. here for this. Yep. Uh, then he finds out who she actually is. Like, oh, you're a working girl. Mm. You want to be one of them or you want to be one of us? Like, you're you're going to die tonight. Like, yeah. you got to pick which one. Yeah. She goes, what the fuck? Uh, so, yeah. So, basically, she does use some fiscal skill when mm-hmm. she has to go and grab some barrel or something. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. And she has to fight, basically, his assistant, the main number one um, assistant yeah. person. Yes. Elsa? Yeah, I think that was her. Her name's Elsa. I, I think it's something like that. Something. But yeah. Anyway, but so, yeah. So, he she has to, like, sh- she straights up, like, kills her and beats her ass which yeah. I think was pretty cool but then she also uses her brain and like really dives in to see like what his bedroom is that's what I really that was the cool part that's what I really like about her like she it's one of the rare cases where she like kind of earns the bad guy's respect yeah and she uses like like the, the funny thing is I was reading that like part of the trivia everyone there is supposed to be someone who like really appreciates food and it's super critical. And she's the yeah. only one who doesn't want to be there. But she's the one who's like, yeah. this sucks. So uh, uh, ironically, the person who doesn't want to be in that environment is the best food critic there. Because she's like, "This none of this makes sense. Yeah. This is stupid. Um, but no, I like that she like is able to see him and like figure out like what his passions yeah. are and whatnot. And she like, she kind of tricks him at the end. And he she lets does. her, he lets, it's the... One final girl who's just let go. He's like, yeah, all right, you she got me. She stays cool, calm, and collected. She was yeah. so cool, and she was just so real. And the fact that she just went, like, she was able to pinpoint and need a fucking cheeseburger at the end. Yes. There is a um, artist on Instagram. She makes, like, the Barbie doll cases with, like, the final girls in it. And the most recent one is Margot. And, like, um. the... Uh, accessory included is a cheeseburger. That's actually really cool. Right? That's really cool. I'll send it to you. Just no, like yeah. the ending. Like the entire like place. Midsummer. Ex- it was so, oh, yeah. yeah. It reminded me of Midsummer. Yeah. So well, well, I, She's also a good no, final Midsummer. girl. She was the bad guy in Midsummer. Oh we God. all know her boyfriend oh was God. the hero. Hill. The boyfriend was the hero was the in that. Actually, ever. my 4K Midsummer is over there. I haven't watched it. 4K. The, direc- the director. The director's cut. What's wrong yeah. with 4K? How long is the director's cut? I don't know. I haven't watched it yet, but I bought it uh, like I, a I've year been, ago. I've been wanting to steal this. It also reminded me of an effed up version of Willy Wonka. This movie. Yeah, that was pretty yeah. good. Yeah. And I, I love uh, oh, that's beautiful. Ralph Fiennes. Right? You can only buy it from the A24 website. And it's only a 4K so Blu-ray. It doesn't come with a regular <gasps> Blu-ray. Beautiful. Oh my gosh! Enough oh, with enough yeah. with <laughs> these images. Enough with that. We have a whole oh, mid. Sorry. We have these a mid. Blur, blur. We have a mid Samar. We have a mid Samar episode you can watch. By the way, the the bear onesie I wore in that. I uh, <laughs> it's probably out by now, but I I will or have worn it in the cocaine bear review that I'm doing with Movie Dumpster. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. Also, I might be doing a oh, photo. That's a good idea. Also, I might be doing a photo shoot with that onesie on a certain website you're not allowed to talk oh. about on YouTube. Anyway, oh. um, no, yeah, that's a good choice. Margot is great. I kind of want to watch the movie again. She was It was awesome. really good. I just like her as well as an actress, like you were saying earlier. Yeah. She she's Really damn good. What was it? Last night in Soho, she was pretty I still good. haven't seen that. What? Oh. And I'm a big Edgar Wright fan. I've been uh, sleeping on it. I keep forgetting to watch it. It's good. It, it's not for everyone. Oh, it's beautiful. She was but in my I fa- thought exactly. She it was, was in my favorite movie last year, The Northman. She was great. Oh, she was in that? Yeah. yeah. I haven't seen Northman yet. No one watched Northman. Yeah, I don't know no one is. watched the movie in a bomb, then no one watched the goddamn review, and it's still one of the, like, the worst. <laughs> she was in The Witch. The she least. was the final girl in The Witch. <laughs> Is that really fun? Yeah. She kind of becomes a bad guy at the end I mean, of the day. No, she's definitely a good final girl in that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That no. is a final girl. Uh huh. What were you going to say? No, I'm just trying to think. Well, You're fuck. thinking of something. All these girls, though, that are some are our underrated final girls are in so many other movies where they're, again, final girls. Like, I feel like those are such great actresses. Oh, she was a final girl in. um. Split. Split. Yeah. Yes. Her name was Casey. Yes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and see, yeah, go ahead. That's just, I'm just saying, like, I just, I want to see more of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to see more of that. No. And to add on to that, yeah. 
overall, the actresses who play these characters are the ultimate final girls because <laughs> just to hear like what they've been through on the set, and you know, horror indie films, I mean, they don't have huge budgets and everything. Oh they are gosh. going through like hell yeah. sometimes. Yeah. And they're the ones that keep coming back for those horror movies. And that's why I always think Daniel Harris is just the <laughs> ultimate <laughs> underrated final girl. But we all know she's just top number one on everything. Yes. <laughs> it comes from passion. It comes from the love of loving horror and yeah. mm. doing it for the audience and having fun themselves. I think yeah. that is something mm. special that these women are able to give to the horror community. Yeah. Um, the one thing that I really liked about Margot she kind of reminded me of you. Me? At, at the end, where she's like, I want to... No, 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 no. Where, at the end, where she's like, I want a cheeseburger. And she's like... And by the way, when she goes, I just want a normal one. Not a pretentious blah, blah, And it reminded me of you in Infinity Pool. Where you're what? like, I hate this. This is pretentious. Because I love cheeseburgers. <laughs> no, I, I just, that was why. No, how like, she's watching this like artsy-fartsy stuff. And she's like, this sucks. It just reminded me of Infinity Pool, where you're like, I hate this movie. Final Girls, they don't pretend to be something they're not. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they are who they are. By the way, I loved Infinity Pool. <laughs> I still have to say you it. You did not love it. I kind of loved it. You thought it was a comedy. I was laughing. I, I, that's the one thing I say to my review of it. I'm like, the best way to watch this movie is with Casey, but she'll never watch it again. Who would watch that again? <laughs> it's pretty fun. Have you seen I it? haven't seen that yet. Don't I have to see it. that. I have to see Megan. I have to see Skin Megan. Mike. Megan looks like Chop Top. She does. <laughs> she does. She'll have sing. you guys seen Skin Rink? Yeah, I reviewed it on the last live episode. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't watch, watch it. You. You're not gonna like. Skin I'll watch the short. Watch the short and see what you think about it. Yeah, watch yeah. the short film. I was gonna watch the one that's on Shutter. On YouTube, it, a lot of people watch it and they're like, "This shouldn't have been a feature length film." And then people are like, "Oh wait, it was a short film originally." <laughs> So a lot of people watch Skin and Rink and then they're like, I wasted two hours of my life. Yeah, so then they that. watch the short film. I saw the meme that said that and then it's like, well, I would have just watched another indie garbage. <laughs> yeah, I would have watched another indie garbage <laughs> thing then, anyway. Like, yeah, exactly. Um, so many movies I need to watch on Shutter. There's no final that. girl in Skin and Rink. That one girl loses her face. Sweet. Whoa. There's no final anything. Well, I, I, I heard I, I heard I enough about it. The face at the end might be a girl. I don't know what the fuck <laughs> happened in Skin and Rink. I'm not going to lie, I don't guys. I everyone does. I had, a, I had a fun time watching it. Um, I will say one problem I had with the menu that was really taking me out of the movie. What? Was uh, my neighbors downstairs uh, having their alarm on for two <laughs> days in a row. So the whole time I'm invested in the menu, I'm watching it. I'm like, wow, this is really good. And the whole time I'm hearing beep, beep, beep. Like the microwave. Beep, 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 <laughs> beep, beep. I, I, I got really bad sleep the last two nights. Anyway. So Didn't that happen to you at your old apartment too? When we Where did Army of happened? the Dead, yeah. I was watching Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead, and while we're watching it, people came to cut a tree outside my apartment <laughs> oh, while I live next to a busy street. So I'm watching the movie with subtitles, <laughs> and I'm just hearing, eh, <laughs> eh. and then the movie sucked, and I'm like, I wish I didn't watch this. This movie's oh. terrible. Uh, but yeah, so I was Stretch and Kirsty Cotton. You were? Aaron and Mary Beth. And you were? Maddie and Margot. And those are the underrated final girls. Uh, yeah, let us know if there are any final girls that you like. Um, I don't think she's a final girl, but my friend has made a trilogy of films called Daisy Durkins. Oh, yeah. And we have one of them over there, Daisy Durkins, Dog Sitter of the Dam. Don't even bother showing the cover. The girl on the cover is not the actress in the movie. Um, I can't. It's yeah. like Barry there. Uh, but the only reason I bring it up is she is a horror movie. girl. She's more of like a badass superhero girl, but mm -hmm. she fights monsters and horror people. And I'm mentioning the newest one because I'm in it. Oh, cool. Not only am I in Daisy Durkins and the Dinosaur Apocalypse, you can see me. Mark Mackner, the amazing director, Mark Mackner, was like, I need someone to sit in a crowd attending a sporting event. He's like, Tony has experience. And I was like, yes, I was. So now I get to say I got to be in a crowd for a sporting event for Christopher Nolan and Mark Mackner. But not only am I in it as a cameo. Uh, have you guys been asking for wow. him? Oh, God. Oh, You've God. heard it here first. Mummy Cop is also in Daisy Durkins and the Dinosaur Apocalypse. And I could be holding up the DVD right now, but I left it at home. Uh, <laughs> but check out that character. That is a very fun character that's been played by multiple people. 
Uh, yeah, and it's really, really fun. What's These, mommy cup? This was a fun episode. It was so fun. I'm glad we finally got to do this. We've been talking about this forever. Yeah. It kept getting delayed. It was. You, we, I think you told us back in like September. Or yeah. Yes. yeah. And and March is. Is it March like Woman Month or something? It is. It International is National Women's Month. Yep. Yes. Right? Day. Um, yeah. There was a day. There is a day, I think, There's somewhere, but it is it is Women's Month. March is yes, Women's and month. the, the mm-hmm. we were going to do an all female episode, but it got scrapped. We were going to do Mean Girls. No, not. I no, yeah, we were going to do Mean, mean Girls. Girls. That we was going to be an all. We talked about doing Mean Girls. And I was going to do it for times. every girl Wednesday. That's apparently a day in this month. Oh, I but didn't then know I had that. to move the entire store, so things got out of hand. Oh. Anyway, I'm glad we finally did this. Casey. A lot of the final girls in these movies were very, very fit. How can yeah. I get <laughs> fit for a final girl? With my guide, Tony. Oh my Think god. For the final girl. Oh. <laughs> As beautiful artwork of a lot of my favorite final girls in it. Mm-hmm. Um, the forward is by Danielle Harris, of course. There's tips and tricks <laughs> from Tiffany Shepis and Felissa Rose. And I do have a new one that came out called Fit for the Final Girl to Hell and Back. With Death Ooh. Comes Lifting. And for me, like, what ultimately a final girl means and what my books, like, kind of represent is that it's not only the strength of your body that matters, mm-hmm. but, like, what I've learned from all of these final girls and, like, just from women that I know personally, <laughs> um, it's about the strength of your moral convictions to never give up and always do better. Yes, but. and uh, I, I got a glowing in-person review of it today. You did? Prison Mike looked, read <laughs> the entire thing today. <laughs> Beautiful. He didn't understand any of the horror stuff. <laughs> but when I asked him what he thought, he went, yeah, it's pretty good. She knows her stuff. I'm like, thank, thank you, prison Mike. <laughs> thank you, prison Mike. <laughs> and then he found the lucky bloke bag and he was asking me what all the stuff was. They didn't sponsor this, so I'm not going to get into that. Uh, That's yes. That's funny. So that is it from us. Please like, share, and subscribe. Send stuff to our P.O. Box. Yeah. We also have a voicemail line that I have not looked at in like five months. I really need to get back to doing the voicemail segment because that was one of my favorite segments. Casey, we had some weirdos calling into this show. Oh, how cool. So I will leave. It's actually in the description of every episode. The P.O. Box number and the voicemail line. Maybe I'll start adding that to the show. And uh, yeah, buy Casey's book where... Uh, gumroad.com slash Casey J. Hempel is that one, the ultimate one. And then we have deathcomeslifting.com. Yes. Yeah. And then Crystal, what do you, what do you, you're on that one website that we can't talk about on YouTube. But, uh, fans. Yeah. It's a not. Lee. Yeah, <laughs> one of your fans is a guy named Lee. Lee. Yeah, my Lee. fan named Lee. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and that's it from us. Goodbye. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page.